Hello, this is Side Streets, a podcast about the history and geography of London. My name is Alan Hertz, and I am Professor of Humanities at Holt International Business School. Despite my accent, I've been prowling London and teaching courses on its history for over 40 years. Side Streets is a Black Lab media production, and producer for this episode was Wilhelm Schenk. Side Streets will not attempt a narrative history of London. It will instead stroll through out-of-the-way places, encounter little-known people, and tell good stories. It will use them, we hope, to illustrate important patterns and principles in London's history, and maybe even in the history of all cities. Our ambition is, to quote William Blake, one of the greatest of all Londoners, to see a world in a grain of sand. We won't try to map the beach, but we will try to bring significant grains into sharp focus. We plan nine episodes of about 15 minutes each for this series. The first three will wander around a small bit of Whitechapel, but this is the last time I will mention Jack the Ripper. The next three will introduce some eccentric observers of London life, but this is the last time I will mention Samuel Pepys. And the last group will look at three works of public art. The first three episodes explore an odd feature of certain areas of London. My word for it is edginess. Londoners call experiences or places edgy if they combine attractiveness and risk. I've stolen the term to describe locations just beyond the city's historic or present borders. These areas are shaped and characterized by their marginal location. Here you find features which Londoners enjoy or value but which would be subject to bureaucratic interference if they were more centrally located. Brothels are, I suppose, the most obvious example. Here you also find things necessary to urban life, but too dangerous to have on your doorstep. Prisons and hospitals, for instance. And here you find immigrant neighborhoods and wholesale markets which draw people and goods from outside the city, but need to be near employers and buyers. Whitechapel, which lay just beyond the city walls for 1,500 years, will give us many examples of edginess. Enough theory, time for a walk. One of London's most interesting side streets is Fieldgate Street. It runs one block south of Whitechapel High Street from the remains of the Whitechapel Bell Foundry, past the rear of the East London Mosque and the queue outside Tayyab's, London's most famous Punjabi restaurant, to the Royal London Hospital. The most impressive building on Fieldgate Street, dwarfing even the mosque, was opened in 1902 as Roughton House, the fifth of a chain of hotels for the working man, providing short-term affordable accommodation in a city that was at last responding to several centuries of housing shortage. Lord Roughton, the man behind the project, was Disraeli's private secretary and closest confidant for 15 years. The basic charge was sixpence per night, although additional charges were made for extras. The Roughton houses were not charities. They would now be called a social enterprise, providing a 5% return on investment. The Whitechapel Roughton House was an amazing place, a fusion of hostel, hotel, and gentleman's club. Those extras included a smoking room, a reading room, a restaurant, a laundry, a tailor, a cobbler. The guests were as remarkable as the building. Women were not admitted, and some of the men were so miserable that they were banned from the Salvation Army hostel just around the corner. But not all. Jack London was one of the first. In People of the Abyss, he calls it the Monster Doss House. Thirty years later... George Orwell lived there while working on Down and Out in Paris and London. And in between the two, Joseph Stalin shared a room with Litvinov, his future foreign minister, while attending the 1907 Congress of the Social Democratic and Labor Party. Lenin and Trotsky, alas, stayed in more respectable, less proletarian Bloomsbury. We should pause to savor some ironies here. Built by a philanthropic Tory in an effort to bring his mentors' famous two nations together, temporary home to two of the most powerful writers about poverty in English, as well as just about the most terrifying totalitarian of them all, Roughton House is now Tower House, a block of luxury flats. Prices start at about £600,000. Well, that's enough for now. Thank you very much for listening. 
Join us soon for our first full-length episode, A Campus Tour. Side Streets is a Black Lab Media production written and researched by me, Alan Hertz. The producer was Wilhelm Schenk.